Hello, Cancer. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. If Cancer is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. And if there is anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Cancer, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And there is a Ten of Swords. That's very interesting. And that was the first card that came out for the uh, Gemini reading as well. Um, we're definitely getting out of something. There is a paradigm shift going on right now. Uh, it's very, very interesting. A lot of, a lot of similar cards to the Gemini reading. This is, this is quite quite interesting. I like the energies that we have here. Let's select our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to use the Smith Waite Tarot. And this is just one card that we select at random and we're going to set it aside. We'll put Simon the Alien right there on top. Now we're not going to look at that card until the very end. Hopefully it will tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we need, right? Okay. Let's do it. Let's take a look here. We have major and major and major. All right. Interesting that we have the sun and the high priestess, which is the, the moon, the full moon, right? We have the sun in Cancer, and you're ruled by the moon. Cancer, we, we are. We are ruled by the moon. So I like this. This is interesting. And then, uh, let's see, we don't have any fire. We have a little bit of water. We got a bit of air, and then we've got some earth. So I think the air really is showing this kind of, um, we're getting out of this self-limiting system. I feel like this is just a continuation of the Gemini reading, honestly. Uh, and maybe we're kind of working our, our way around the Zodiac with these readings a little bit, um, and the way they kind of flow into each other. But the Ten of Swords, we're getting out of a situation. Something is telling you it's time to go, okay? And that is your higher self, your intuition. Tap into your lunar nature, right? Tap into this full moon kind of information, this spiritual connection. Tap into your instinct, your gut, your in whatever you want to call it, your higher self. That line of communication, tap into that. Um, listen to that. Because there is a message that your higher self is trying to get through to you about some situation that you're in that is restricting you, right? What's it restricting you from? Your best life. Ten of Pentacles. This is the postcard from the future. This is the picture of your best life. I'm sure I've asked you this before, but if you were to draw a picture of what your best life would look like. What are you going to draw? What is your picture going to look like? If you're like me, you can't draw, make a list. What's the top 10? What are those things that you need in your life? Family, friends, if it's you know, a certain place that you, <clears throat> you wanna live, a certain type of uh, creative work, you know, what you do for money or, or you know, all of these things. What does your best life look like? Well, we can't get there if we're stuck in this Ten of Swords. If we're stuck in this air energy, which is it's very restrictive. We see an eight here as well. So a ten and an eight. Um, you know, I think the eight honestly is worse than the ten because the ten is showing that it's ending, that it is over. I think the Knight of Swords is bringing that message to us. There's a sense of urgency. There's this intuitive understanding. It's like you already know you've got to leave. You've already, you already know that this situation is no good for you. Maybe this is a place of employment. Maybe this is a particular uh, relationship or anything in your life that you are involved with. You know, 
in your gut right now that you've got to leave this if you want to achieve your best life. Something's holding you back. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to the sun card up above. This is what we aspire to. We aspire to be fully enlightened beings. We feel like we should be able to see everything, right? The sunlight gets rid of every shadow. The sun, way up above, no shadows, right? The light can get to every corner. Nothing is hidden from you. There's this idea that we need to be all-seeing, all-knowing. And maybe at times we are. I think you have that lunar connection with that high priestess. I feel like you have a very strong psychic sense about you. But there's this idea that you should have seen this coming. There's this idea that if you were really so enlightened, why didn't you know? Like if you're, like you hear the thing about psychics, right? Oh, well, if, you know, if, uh, if you're really psychic, um, you know, didn't you know that this was going to happen? Or how come you, you don't, you don't win the lottery or something like that, you know? Anytime anything, anything negative happens or anything unforeseen or unexpected, you think, well, if I was really psychic, I should have seen it coming. Well, I've gotten that stuff. My cat too. She's gotten that same kind of comment. Um, that's not what being, being psychic is. We're not fortune tellers, right? We're not trying to predict the future um, with any degree of certainty. Yes, with the sun card here, with this kind of enlightenment, we do have this idea of um, an intuitive sense of what's coming. Here's the cat. She's, she's been really involved in the readings lately. I don't really know why. Nothing has changed that I can really perceive, but she's been very very interested in the readings. The last couple of cycles. So I think that this is, is probably just a very important time for all of us in the world right now. And she's here to just kind of reinforce that, you know, maybe give us her two cents. So anyway, with the sun card here, it's, um, you, you do have this kind of divine psychic perception. You do have this ability to, um, to feel energy. Now, it doesn't always translate into us knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. I can't predict what the, uh, the traffic signals are going to I can't predict the weather, really, right? Um, maybe we could do better than the, the weather people, but that's not exactly what the psychic energy is, or this kind of intuition, or this spiritual knowing, or whatever you want to call it. So this idea that you should have prevented this from happening, I almost knocked my tea over. The idea that you could have prevented this from happening or that you should have been able to get out of this situation or not even get involved with it is kind of a false, a false notion, right? And I think the sun card is up here to, uh, to reinforce that, that this idea that you are, you are uh, becoming enlightened step by step, slowly, but in degrees, right? Not, I don't think it happens all at once. You're getting more in tune with your ruling moon, right? You're trying to really step into your solar cancer nature, but you're trying to understand how you're being, how you're ruled by the moon, which is also, you're ruled by these feelings. And it's trying to, we're trying to understand conscious and unconscious at the same time. We're trying to understand what we perceive and what we feel. And our feelings are always shifting. We may be able to see the facts, but as far as our intuition goes, as far as our, our deeper feelings go, um, these, these sometimes carry more weight than our perception of the facts. Right. So anyway, that's that's a lot of nonsense, really. The point is this situation here. Listen to your feelings. Don't try to just um, don't try to uncover all of the secrets. Don't try to predict the past or present or future. Listen to your intuition. Listen to this ruling moon, this priestess energy about this situation, because whatever it is, it's preventing you from getting to your best life. Now, the Three of Cups that's underneath everything, this is your 
This is your essential water nature. Right? This is your understanding of what you need, what motivates you, what you require in life. In your, this is you knowing what your best life looks like. Right? It's full of love. And you know how to create love in your life. You know that this is what you want. You want to, you want to generate this kind of, um, this this love and this um, this sense of uh, sense of peace, a sense of compassion, a sense of connectedness. This is what drives you. This is what is really within you. Right? This water energy. And I kind of, the way, we're, the way we're looking at this is, again, it's kind of like this situation that we're in is preventing us from seeing the Three of Cups. You see, we can't, we look down this way, we run into this cloud, this smog, right? It's not so easy to see the Three of Cups beneath us. Maybe we're having trouble realizing what our true purpose is, what our true needs really are. The Three of Cups, this is what you need. Can we see them from here? Yet another reason why this needs to be cleared out so we can see what our purpose is, what our needs are, and we can join all of these together. We can accept our true self, all of our being, our, our ruling moon, our emotions, our conscious mind, our enlightenment, our soul, our higher self, our true cancer nature, Right? And we can use that to create our best life. This air energy is interfering. This is what we want. We want uh, an awakened, enlightened, conscious um, mind, movement forward, that's, being, that's driven by our connection with Source and Spirit, our intuition, our moon, and that is creating a best life that is going to suit our needs, that is going to fulfill our needs, whatever they may be. Whatever the Three of Cups really is for you, we want a, a life that is going to fulfill that. So this is, this is our plan. This is what we are trying to do. And this is preventing us from doing it. All right. This stuff's getting in our way. Mostly that air energy and then this... Knight of Swords is, is the urgency, is this the, the idea here that's saying, trust your gut, we have to do something. And then, of course, we get to this emperor on the path of the serpent. This is, this is the energy that we need to, to invoke right now. The discipline, the authority, the rulership of our own lives. We're not acting hastily, we're not being impulsive. We're being reasonable, we're, being, we're trying to be fair, but we're being assertive, right? This is focusing on the, the cardinal part of our, our cardinal water, of the cancer nature, right? This is focusing on that fire part of it. Uh, being assertive, standing up for ourselves, understanding that getting rid of this situation is going to probably piss somebody off. It may be disappointing to someone, but we have to do what's right for ourselves because this is what we are, this is what we want. If we can get rid of this, we've got this perfect configurate. This is a perfect alignment here. But to get this, we've got to use this to get rid of this. All right? Does that 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 sounds reasonable, right? Easier said than done. Next card, eight of swords. This is us getting really wrapped up in our thoughts. Um, cancers, at least in my opinion, my experience, I'm a solar cancer too. So this is really hitting home for me. Um, especially right now with stuff, what's going on in my kind of my work life and stuff, you know, because I have a day job, if you didn't know that. Um, cancers have a tendency to overthink. Yeah, surprise, right? Um, everybody assumes cancers are these, you know, very emotional people. Um, and that's true. I think we are very sensitive. But those emotions, that sensitivity usually results in a lot of thinking. 
thinking about how we feel, feeling a certain way about how we're thinking. Heart and mind are really tangled up with us, I think, and feel. I feel that way too. Um, so that's kind of a difficulty because that is going to make us a little indecisive. That is why there's such a need for this emperor energy because if not, we're going to be kind of just stuck in the, um, the, uh, the indecisive air, eight of swords kind of energy. We're going to be really tangled up in how we think, how we feel, what we want. And that is in large part because we are looking at things through this clouded ten of swords. We're not really seeing, feeling our intuition very well. We're not seeing down here to that three of cups very well. We're not seeing the future very well. We're kind of everywhere we look, it's a little bit clouded, our perception. So we first need to make the decision to clear out that blockage. We've done that. And now I think this Eight of Swords will clear up a little bit. We'll get out of this kind of tangle of thinking, feeling, right? Feeling, thinking. And what's next, of course, is the Two of Swords. And this is right along the same lines because this is in the position, if you look over here, this is in the position of what we don't want. We don't want to decide. We're, we don't want to have to choose. We don't want to do what, however things are right now, let's, we'll just leave them alone. Just keep doing what we're doing. I don't want to make a choice. I don't want to have to decide. You know, and that really hits home for me. I don't want to, you know, talk too much about my personal life. The, these readings aren't about me. But you can ask my wife. She's over at Ula Tea Leaf Readings. She does, well, she does tea leaf readings. Uh, she'll tell me all the time, just make up your mind, right? Just decide, even for what, are we, what do you want to have for dinner? Hmm, I don't know. I got I to gotta think about it. I got I to gotta see how I feel. She's, can you just make a decision, you know? Um, and that's something so minor as just what I want to eat. But when it comes to things like, you know, my job, my, my employment, the time that I'm spending, you know, doing my day job. I can't decide. I just, I don't want to, I don't want to make a decision. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Right. And yes, doing, not, not making a decision, rejecting that two of swords keeps me and all of us. This is a collective reading. This, this reading isn't about me. Keeping us all in this clouded position where we can't really perceive what is real, what we want, what our, what our gut tells us, what our future looks like, what we really want and need, and all this stuff. This is what we've got to get rid of. We've got to realize that there is a need for us to choose. We have to just stand up, be assertive, get rid of this confusion, get rid of this blockage, get rid of whatever this system is that's keeping us from attaining our best life. And you know what? We finally have a six of pentacles. This comes at the end of the path of the serpent. This is us triumphing over this situation, over this indecision, over all of this air energy, this limiting, whatever this restrictive and limiting system was, we've conquered it. We've overcome it. We've gotten past that. We've gotten rid of it. Doesn't mean our life is perfect. Doesn't mean that we fully have our best life yet but we're well on our way. This is a good this is a good resting point. This is a good like plateau to reach. There's still more mountain to climb, yeah. But now we can actually see the top. We can see the summit of the mountain once we get here. So this is really this is a wonderful spot. This is going to be a beauty and a harmony. This is really tremendous progress. And it's going to feel like progress. It's going to feel like a win, you know. But we have to change this, this air energy. We have to get out of this one. Let's look at the mystery card now. I've really, I've really done a number on these cards. Um, I could try to put them back where they were briefly, if you will bear with me. And we'll get to that mystery card. There. Good enough, right? All right, let's see what Simon says. And yes, if you are, if you are a cancer like me, you'll know that we can't just leave the cards all cattywampus like that. We've got to straighten them out. That's why I'm always, that's why you always see my hands just kind of, you know, 
fidgeting with stuff down here. I'm just keeping the cards nice and nice and straight. I like everything to to be happy and properly aligned. There we go. All right. So, Simon, what is going on with the mystery card? Um, I want to show the result of getting rid of this. I want to just see some progress, you know. Um, a five of pentacles would be fine. A five of swords would be fine for me right now. Something that shows movement, decisions in a certain direction. Even a three of swords would be okay. Um, gosh, I don't know. Let's see what it is. I'm, I'm thinking some kind of an odd-numbered card anyway, right? Oh, it's the moon. This is the new moon. We have the full moon. Now we've got the, the new moon, right? This is interesting because this is something that, well, it's the moon. It rules cancer, right? So this is a couple of things. This is one, initially, first of all, sometimes, not all of us, but some of us sometimes can be ruled by our fears. Our fear of the unknown, our fear of change. Our fear of moving toward a future that we haven't been able to see so clearly yet. But this is one of those weird kind of catch-22s because in order to see the future clearly, we have to venture into the unknown and make that decision to get rid of that air energy, right? So we have to do the scary thing just so we can see clearly and not be scared of, of what's, what's in the future for us, you know? It's, it's that weird kind of situation. Um, so this card is here to confirm that, yeah, it's, the future is unknown. Right now, we can't see it clearly. We have to make the decision first and then we will see it clearly you know it's like a like a game show where you've got to you've got to choose that suitcase before we'll show you what's in it well how can i choose i don't know what's in it that's it you got to choose first i don't like that game um but this is that this is that kind of energy and sometimes us cancers we can be persuaded not to act because we don't know we don't know what's what to expect you know um, but this card's also confirming that big changes are coming in your life that something does need to change there's a reason why we have two moons why why we have a full moon and a new moon we have the waxing and the waning of the moon you know, the fluctuate, things are changing. The moon is going from dark to light, from light to dark. There is movement here. The movement is, is we feel it on an unconscious, intuitive level. We have to embrace it and act and, and utilize it. Otherwise, the changes are going to cause disruptions we don't even know where. And that, I think, will be worse than if we just do that difficult step now. Right? Make that leap now. I want to check the I Ching in this situation. All right, I don't, I don't very often consult the I Ching cards in these tarot readings, but um, I should. I should consult them more often. These are the 64 hexagrams representing the wisdom of the ancient Chinese sages and their connection with spirit, with source. And I know this is not the traditional way of casting a hexagram, but I'm going to do it anyway. Or maybe... I'm not going to do it, and it's just going to happen. Um, what did we get? We've got 19. Nearing. Creating success from the source. Constancy bears fruit. Arrival at the eighth month means a pitfall. Okay, I don't know about the timing here, except there is a connection with the eight. Arrival in, at the eight month. If we arrive here in the eight, that's a pitfall. Yeah, that, I mean... That resonates, right? That makes sense to me. If we arrive here, that it's that's that's going to be bad news. So nearing, I think, I think all of this change, I think, is getting closer. I think if we are looking to create success, which is this, 
from source, which is our true nature, our spirit, guardian angels, God, goddess, deity, our intuition, our higher self, this whole thing, right? higher self, lower self, emotions, mind, all of it, creating success from the source. If we are consistent with this, we'll bear fruit. But if we arrive at the eighth month, that's a pitfall. Now, there's more text for the hexagram. Let me just show, show that one that we have, number 19. It says, the greater spirit draws nearer in an ongoing process of growth as you simultaneously pay patient attention and take responsibility. Harvest happens during the eighth month, but it isn't the end of the process of growth. Stay present to the ongoing cycle and do not only focus on the results. So now it's saying that the eighth month is um, when the, the harvest happens, right? This is, where the, this is where we're going to reap what we sow, right? By either getting stuck in this situation or making the decision to move forward. This is where we, re we reap what we've sown. Now, if, if we just arrive here, that means that we're just being dropped right into this chaos, this restriction, right? Right into this tangle. But if we start here and we work our way over, then we're, we're gradually getting to this position and we can deal with it effectively because we know how now. We've done the, the we've pre-gamed it, right? We're not just dropping right down into the eight. We've done all of this work first to get here. So that makes sense to me. And of course, this idea of, um, you know, paying attention, taking responsibility. It's an ongoing process. And then the questions, how does this want to grow? How can you take responsibility for its development? What would your greater self do? What does this energy tell? What is it telling you? What is your gut? What is your intuition? God, goddess, deity, guardian, angel. What are you being instructed to do? What is the message coming through? Well, we talked about that. And we have to take responsibility for it, which is the emperor energy. As usual, the I Ching does not disappoint. So um, this reading resonates heavily with me. I hope it does for you as well. We're going to do an extended. If you want to stick around, click on the link in the corner. All right. I want to thank you sincerely for being here. I always feel a special connection with the Cancer Collective. Um, and through these readings, I feel like we're kind of all getting to know each other better. You know. So hopefully this resonated with you. Hit the like button, please. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Thanks again for being here. And I'll see you again very soon.